Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 204 of the Terminus Podcast for the weeks of March 18th, 2023. Milky, what? I said 204. What is 204? I don't know. Probably some prairie. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. In my head, I pictured a prairie. 205. <laughs> that's probably why. Uh, that's yeah. the one engine with the multiple builders, isn't it? No. No. Mm, I don't believe you. Anyway, I'm your host, Ellis, otherwise known as the Admiral. With me, I have one engineer, that's Nicholas Christensen, two firemen, hey. that's TJ Sicosio, and Nicholas Wakefield. Hey. And uh, returning for, I believe this is your second time on the podcast. Third. Third? Yeah, oh, third. Kaiserin. That sounds right. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to do a pronoun hey. check? I know you, your pronouns are yeah, different uh, since the last time you were on. Pronoun, pronouns have changed. Uh, she, her now instead of he, him. All right. And. We have quite a smattering of things to cover, and not a lot of time to cover it, so the train will terminate at this station. Who wants to tell the audience where we are? I will. We are located at Waycross, Georgia. Um, and that is, we're kind of standing right by the uh, entrance to the Fitzgerald sub. You're looking at the uh, Waycross uh, diamond right in front of you. Hashtag bring it to run eight. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, CSX's Waycross yard, kind of right there in the, in the foreground. Uh, the A line, the S line, all kind of. Or a line kind of comes through here. You're looking at the Thomasville sub. I think is technically what this is, and something has a light to go into the yard, but doesn't seem to want to take it. Yeah, I was about to say this guy is a red over red over lunar white, and I don't know what that means, but I don't think it means just stop. So I don't it's, know why this um, man is not moving. It's restricting. Okay. Uh, well, you should get on with it then. We have. So someone must have told BNSF. Uh, it was being too lame and not crashing because we have one, two, three, four, five different incidents from them, uh, Ooh, including the earliest one on record for these past couple weeks, which is a train derailment in Verdigris or Verdig, yeah, Verdigris. 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 Um, where is this? Um, you said that like you know where it is. That's what the only reason I'm asking. Uh... <laughs> uh, Ver yeah, dude, where is okay, this? clearly he does not. That doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, matter. I thought you were it? just going to be able to respond. Anyway, train derailed. It's caught on dash cam, uh, or someone hold, uh, taking a video on their phone. Oklahoma, where the <laughs> Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plane. Yeah. Not to be outdone, NS killed a man that same day. Oh. Um, one of their own employees. They got. It, it was a collision between a train and a dump truck. I don't, I don't really know the details, but this is quite an extensive article on, on trains.com if it decides to let you read it. Um, the following day, CSX joined the party. Uh, they derailed a train and it caught fire in Summers County, West Virginia. They derailed a bunch of empty coal cars like into a river and also the engines. Yep. You know, uh, two articles on that one. The following day, we have two more incidents. Again, one from uh, one from BNSF where a train hits a truck, and the truck doesn't even like crumple at all. It just gets knocked out of the way. It's like it's like if you just put like a wooden block on your HO scale yeah. tracks and ran into it. Um, and let's see, Norfolk Southern again followed up by derailing a bunch of cars. Not not crazy spectacular, but uh, no reports of hazmat, which means the area is uninhabitable. Uh, and then, the following day, I keep saying the following day, but these are coming one after the other, uh, we get the bad ending to the Polar Express, where the kids cannot find the break, and the train runs over an entire herd of caribou. Actually, this was elk, but, uh, yeah. BNSF just demolished an entire herd of elk. Um, you like that sometimes. Sucks to be an elk, I guess. Yeah, that's 
pretty brutal. I don't want to know what the engine looked like after that. Um, no, wasn't there a uh, Amtrak electric locomotive that destroyed an entire herd of deer? I wouldn't be unsurprised. <laughs> what, I, it was some. I think it was on the Northeast Corridor. It just destroyed an entire herd of deer. I saw a pretty brutal photo of like a European locomotive that had plowed through a bunch of deer. Uh, this was probably a couple of years ago. Anyway, uh, this was the next one was Union Pacific on the twelfth. Uh, just crashed, leaked denatured alcohol, started a small ga uh, grass fire. Very exciting. I don't even know where this was. Oh, Kansas. Somewhat, yeah. It's it's the middle of nowhere. Um, let's see what else. That was the twelfth. Next ones are on the fifteenth. This is three separate incidents. One from Union Pacific, which is Two a from BNSF. Fantastic picture of oh, well, yeah, uh, a UP locomotive just in the in the snow on its own, nowhere near tracks. Um, yeah, the a train derailed after hitting a snowbank, and yeah. Whip. Um, then we have CSX hitting a cement truck on that same day, and BNSF getting an absurd amount of coverage. Six different articles on a derailment. Is there were Two derailments. These were two derailments. There were two separate derailments on the same on um, the fifteenth. They might. I think they're both. They're all. Those articles are covering the same derailment. But there were two derailments on the same day, like two hours apart, on the same place in the same place. Oh well, my! So okay. first off, a westbound manifest derailed. I put a bunch of cars in the ground. Shut both main lines down. Hong Kong. Um, uh, it was the westbound, I think it was the Kansas City a Barstow train. Put like uh put a bunch of cars down on the ground right near the Arizona border at Topic. Uh shut both main lines down. And then like two hours later, the uh transfer manifest derailed and foul play is suspected in the second derailment. Ooh. Um it's somebody we it's where they're pretty confident that a um some kids came and flipped the switch under the train. Bruh. But the main lines were shut down uh, for like two days after the after the that one, um, and I actually saw when I was down on the Sunset Route, they derailed, they retoured, they detoured some of their priority traffic over the Sunset Route, mm -hmm. and I did see a couple suns, I did see a couple bean sniff trains on the Sunset Route. Neat. I sent a picture of one that I snapped from the car. Uh, also, the train on Waycross is finally moving. Um, so okay, it. it Oh, Julius, I'm glad when you're on this show because you just have so much information about modern yeah. railroading stuff. I, I hope you saw the messages I wrote to you about, like, hey, if you decide to follow CPKC operations stuff and you want to, like, explain it to someone, please make that person be me. Um, okay. I mean, I'm not super knowledgeable on either railroad's operations, but... I, I, I'm not asking you to do a research paper for me. I'm just saying I know that you're going to pick this stuff up just automatically. Uh, and if you have no one else to explain it to, uh, just, you know, I, I also want, like, an, a very basic... Un it makes me happy to understand these things. I just don't have the time to figure it out myself. Anyway, uh, the day afterward, BNSF tipped over another train, uh, a pair of locomotives that were apparently running headlong at an open drawbridge. So, in oh, order well, to... Well, I probably just had an automatic derailleur. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. They just got tipped off the track. Um, well, Milky, were you going to say something? I said breath. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, it was either this or a, a follow-on of that one SP picture that everyone knows. That was on the 16th. On the 17th, we have, I think, our final derailment of the period. Aside from a couple that we got but had no railroad attached to them, I couldn't figure out what railroad it was. So this is the last one we're covering. Which is, oh, there was a breaking news possibly. There was a truck on the tracks, and the engineer dumped the air, and the train just bunched up behind him. That, that happens. It, it happens. It's just very funny because you have this image of the train about, you know, 50 yards from the truck, maybe more, uh, which is just still sitting on the crossing. I, I assume. Either this was a very, very long straight section and he saw him not moving, or he got the call over the radio like, hey, you've got you've got a, a 
truck stuck. Just dump it. And so he did that, and the train just, like, accordioned behind him. Was it an all-auto rack train? I yeah, it think was. it was, yeah. Yeah, that's, that happens. Uh, auto racks, the reason auto racks are... Everyone hates auto racks because they have about a billion feet of slack in, in the cars. Mm. And so when you slam on the brakes, all, like, the 50 bajillion feet of slack in the loaded auto racks just goes boom right on the front of the heavy locomotives. And if the locomotives don't budge too much, which typically when you apply the emergency brake, it also sets the independent to full service. Yeah. So you basically have an in, un, unstoppable object meeting in, in uh, or unbreakable wall or however that analogy goes. Um, and this is what happens. Well, those are all the wrecks from the period. What, TJ, what did you say about breaking news? Uh, may or may not have some breaking news. It's kind of a little speculative, but there oh. are some uh, some 80 tonners leaving a naval base uh, bound Uh-oh. for Connecticut. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Valley mean? Railroad is still connecting the fr- collecting the infinity 80 tonners. Uh, well, oh. It's so- oh, shit. What? Did you just swear? TJ, I'm Hold telling on. mom. Hold on, I have the button. Have the button. <laughs> All right, what happened to TJ? Did he drop his chicken? Like, I think uh, I think the government <laughs> silenced him for giving out Navy yeah. eighty tonner secrets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Computer just restart. Whip. I like how. Okay. Uh... Well, I, I was excited to hear about the 80 tonners. Yeah, I, I suppose we'll have to come back to those, but uh, Agilis, yeah. I'll put up this picture back up again if you want to briefly cover what you've been up to, because you just drove five hours to be here. Yeah. I didn't, well, I didn't drive five hours to be here. You just said, we're doing the podcast at 1 Pacific, and I was like, okay, I think I, or I, we're doing the podcast, I have to have it done by 4 Pacific, and I was like, all right, well, I'll be home at 1. And, I mean, I'll be sad because I just said goodbye to my family, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't sad right now. So, um, I I went to the sunset route uh, over the weekend hey. um, <laughs> to visit. Well, I really went to Yuma, and I didn't go to go to the sunset route. I went to visit my grandma, who is down there. My grandma and my grandpa. I say that like it's a bad thing, as if I didn't want to go visit my grandparents, but I did. Um, it was it was and, uh, my grandparents and also Union Pacific. Yeah, it was my grandparents, and they said I could have several hours to go see trains. So, do you think I'm going to say no? Uh, there we go. Hello. Oh, good. Oh back. God, he's back. Yeah. Everybody, fun's over. Everybody, podcast some more. Um, I saw a few trains. Uh, I also saw three BNSF reroutes from the aforementioned derailments. But I, uh, I didn't. They were all at night or uh, really backlit, so I didn't, I didn't bother. But um, these are some of the pictures. I have to I say liked. this this photo that um, that you posted of the BNSF train has such incredibly even lighting. It's blowing my mind. Uh, I was about to say what is the coolest thing you saw, but I see this SP patch and I feel like I've answered my own question. Um, it actually wasn't the SP patch. Um, it, that second, uh, the coolest thing I saw in Milky Wool, also like this, was this guy. Uh, it's sending. Uh, yeah, what the hell? Guy. Oh, it's uh, the, Hems, drove, the Hems Railroad. I drove to El Centro, California, yesterday. Um, because I, Yuma is like an hour from El Centro. Uh, and I was like... Somebody in Arizona had told me, hey, by the way, the last SP painted GP40-2 is sitting in El Centro if what? you want to drive that car. SP painted. Mm-hmm. That's a loose, and I was like, loose uh, description. And I was like, sure, I'll drive to El Centro to see an SP painted GP40-2. And I did. And I was in El Centro for all of 20 minutes, and it was a very sketchy town, and I decided I would probably not be there. <laughs> but it was cool. Yeah. Um... Uh, and I have a bunch of other pictures on my on my phone or on my camera that I just Stop. barely got back, so I haven't edited yet. You got this. I did ACS also unit. see. Rest in peace. I did also see one of the UP New Scheme boys. Um, actually, Ooh. two of them, but I don't have video of the second one, of course. And I got 
some crew threw toilet paper out at me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> nice. I haven't taken this picture off my camera yet, so you'll have to enjoy that one. And let me actually edit it. Hold on. Let me, hold on, though. Let me just turn my head. Ah, my yeah, neck. I just had to turn my head 90 degrees. All right. Anyway, on. no, that's let fine. That's fine. Um, we gotta move on! <laughs> Keep moving. What, TJ, did you have something you wanted to talk about? <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we have been working in MPS a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, Mason redid the route. Uh, Mason made the roundabout uh, up to code. Mason realigned the roundabout. Yeah, he, he did. He made it. Uh, he made it up to spec. Now it's not just like a black tarmac uh, yeah. void. Which Wo is good. Wo dead came back from getting the mill. So, <laughs> yes. have you? I know you're like a Surveyor 2.0 convert. Have you looked at that roundabout in Surveyor One? No, and I don't want to. It is just a sea of spline points. You cannot see imagine. anything under the spline points. Yeah, no, I'm glad I'm a Surveyor 2.0 boy. <laughs> I just went over there to, to check it out. Best. And then I finished the yard ladder for the coach yard, the second coach yard, uh, and I started replacing all of the switch stands to make sure everything was all set over, like, all of our main lines in Geiger. And by all of the main lines, I, I just mean, like, the major ones that I have been fixing up. Uh, TJ, I didn't yeah. touch the inner urban really. Oh, I did do a little bit of work on the inner urban that I've got to show you uh, when we get back on to MPS, because uh, <laughs> I crashed MPS because I accidentally undid deleting a train. Um, yeah. And Seeps thought it was him because I was not on Discord, and I, I was just, I had to admit that it was it was me. Um, it was you. It was me. And I feel really bad when I do that because, I mean, not only do I not to get to play MPS, uh, I prevent everyone else from yeah. being able to play MPS and, like, build. I posted on the train's Discord what happened. I hope they reboot it before Tuesday. Uh, yeah, so I I was going through like trains with Rarls. I wanted to. I just all I wanted to do was drive a train around. Um, all I wanted to do was drive a train around. And you know what? I said screw it. I went into Tolbrand. I made a copy. I deleted all the AI so that it could actually run properly. And then I just drove a train around and started shunting. Because uh, at least there, all my industries work. True. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You were doing some work in MPS as well, right, Moki? Yeah, I was. I think your tree copy pasting what? is what uh, kicks us all off the server periodically, based on what uh, the smoking. devs have said. <laughs> well, then he's I'll not just, I'll stopping anytime off. soon. Uh, I'll, I'll do quick. <laughs> I feel like that might not be a good idea either. Well, we'll see if there's an appreciable difference. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, I've been working on somewhere that you can try to in MPS. The Your mom's house. Yes, okay. actually. It's over there in the sorry. corner. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so I've been working on the small town of uh, Rabbit Falls. Although not inspired by anything. <laughs> well, we definitely not. Uh, I do, can we get some 7.5 inch gauge uh, assets yeah. in? I think there's an there's some 18 inch track. Yeah, there is. Oh, we're well. Uh, <laughs> I've just been working around there on the MPS map. Oh my I God, made my... the track go through a soccer field. <laughs> cool. I see. <laughs> and I made a small yard for the forest brand. <laughs> but, cool. Yeah. Yeah, part yeah, of my. Cool. I'm probably going to have that be a separate company. But tied in with the railroad. <laughs> uh, part of me, uh, part of the work I've been doing in Geiger is trying to figure out where all like the yards are for the different transfers. Right. Um, and uh, you said we could drive to it, uh, but unfortunately, Milky, uh, you can only drive to Jader at this point in time. Oops, I hit the button again. Um, I just leaned on it. It's going to explode. Yeah, no, uh, because there's there was like this big quadrangle diamond at the yeah. south end of where Milky and TBA and Tyler all come in, and I basically just destroyed the whole thing. 
because I need to rebuild it. Okay, we can still haul traffic over the railroads <laughs> um, between the Florida streets and the mill and Grammar Falls. Yes. So this did not impact our trout population. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. <clears throat> Is anyone that's else? about it for MPS. Oh, okay, yeah. I can tell you I'm jealous of Graham because he's at the Fall River Division. Yeah, Fall River he knows is, it too. Fall River's okay. They've got a nice battleship. <laughs> Ellis, if you got to go to the Fall River Division, I think you might just like like start foaming out of your penis. I I think I would I think it, you need to go get that checked out. <laughs> yeah. I think I would enjoy it. I, I don't Unless there's like uh, some contextual like lead up to seeing a train, seeing a train is like, oh, I'm glad I've seen a train. No, uh, he's. I think he's talking about the model railroad, right? Yeah, model railroad. Oh, okay. Yeah, talking about the model railroad. Oh, okay. I was like, I, I figured it was some western subdivision I had never heard of. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've seen some cool model railroads. It does seem very cool, though. Um, is that the? That's different from the club in Greeley that he's been at, right? Yeah, that's like a BNSF modern. Uh, um, the one in Gree is actually like set in the fifties. Yeah, it's the Oregon, California, and Eastern, which I've been on part of the railway, and the the Oregon Railroad and MPS is totally <laughs> inspired by it. Nice. Is that that's not Weibold's old club, is it? No, uh, that was yeah. his. Was like in Denver. Because um, I remember it, him saying, because I thought they used to have a caboose as well, and this Greeley Museum has a caboose, or Greasley, whatever. Really? Heck, Greeley. Greeley. You said Greasley, it right the first time. Whatever. You said Greeley um, and then Greasley. Greasley. <laughs> this greasy place or whatever has a um, greasy spoon. <laughs> they have a, a caboose inside as well. They have a model railroad and delicious burgers. Delicious greasy, greasy burgers. <laughs> I love greasy burger. Yes. But you've been doing you know stuff why? with, uh, with uh, your M6, Milky. Yeah, you know what I like more than a greasy burger, an M6 mogul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the city finally wired up the headlights on the tender and the front end, and they're nice. Uh, I don't know if they're going to wire up the markers at any point, or the number boards, but that'd be dope. As far as I know, we still don't have keys. No. Oh. We, we, we can't do anything. So you can go in and look at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's cool. Um, the way that they wired it up works pretty well. Like, they wired it through the cab, in the through the frame of it, up to the head guy. So it's not... It's not too visible, really, how they did it. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, oh that's you have the cool. sub like an extension cable yeah, going I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not the sub noxus extension cord. I mean, they painted it, and it kind of just brings in. The Home yeah. Depot orange extension cord hanging from the roof. Yeah. Uh, I put something in the locomotive versus thing for you. Um... And then I saw it on the abandoned track. Uh, the two branch with this railroad crossing and about 300 feet beyond the Y or all that remains of it. Sad. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was uh, people doing their job in the building to the right, so I could not just walk and go <laughs> see the Y. <laughs> This important load of tires was the last thing brought down the railroad. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Kaiser, and you haven't gotten a word in edgewise so far. What have you been doing? Uh, uh, well, I, three things, uh, mainly. Uh, MS Paint, I got a promotion, and I got some pictures of 116 for y'all. Uh, yes. Okay, I'll send the pictures of 116 first <laughs> in the uh, terminus. The ghost of Fomer's past. If they'll go. Uh oh. 
I think the uploading is taking a toll on Kaiserin's extremely limited bandwidth. There's an attempt. I, I see no pictures, and I... Okay, there we go. There's some pictures. Okay, there they are. There is a big oak tree just out of frame of that first picture <laughs> that grew up through the middle of the track. <laughs> that is how long that engine has been sitting there. I, if you're ever hey, wondering... If you ever lose the date that they put it there, just chop down the tree and count the rings. Right. <laughs> and the amazing thing is, is that since 1955, when they put put the engine in the park, nobody has stolen the number plate, nobody has stolen the bell, or the builder's plates. They're still there. That is fortunate. That does not yes, always happen. Like, oh, sorry. The whistle's still okay. there. All the fittings are still there. Or you know, it's... So they took the the city took the whistle off. It's in storage, but they left everything else there. Okay, I mean, it looks like I, th these pictures have the whistle. At least the first one does. Oh. Well, it must have the whistle then, because I just didn't notice it. <laughs> or at least I was told they took the whistle off and didn't notice. Maybe they took anyway, the second off. thing is. The second short thing is, I got a promotion. Yay, I'm, Yay I'm congratulations. No just, I'm no longer just a grunt volunteer. I'm now the secretary volunteer of the Meridian Rails Historical Society. That is, I don't uh, get paid. you know, probably the worst job. It's probably a lot of paperwork. Yeah. Have fun. Yep. And then the one that'll take a little bit, uh, a little bit longer is my MS Paint stuff and Ellis, I would just say look in photo dump and pick three of them that you think are interesting. Yeah, I... Where's the one that says electric on the side? There it is. This English electric delta thing. It's very neat. Deltic? It no, says it, delta. Well, there's a story behind it. It's the North American, like, second batch of deltics. Ah. So, like... North America gets the first batch of Deltics when they're exported like they were supposed to be. And then they ordered the second batch later on. And this is the second batch. A Deltic and Delta. Uh, also, I mean, this there's a bunch of things in here for me to pick out. I kind of was, I was looking at the uh, SD40-2B, which is very funny. Uh, these, these high hood Jeep B units, they sort of look like a dieselized version of what was the, the the John Henry which it itself in turn looks like it was sort of just brought out of Tron and put into the real world yeah this is what a uh, this is what an autonomous locomotive would look like yeah and then I I do have one steam locomotive which is the most recent one I've sent in there uh, the notice limited where does notice come from as a, well, as a notice, name. notice is the Greek god of the South. I wind. had a feeling you were going to say that. That's cool. That's there, actually super cool. There is a. It's, um, the, uh, it's the Gulf Railway Company, so I had to name it Southern themed. Hold on. You know, a, I, I've been I've been sucked in by a by a thing. Uh, there's an album called Notice. Uh, which I'm just gonna put this in here. I just need to share share these with everyone. There's a these four albums, uh, which are the four wins, and they start with notice or yeah. notos. That is also the four wins are inscribed in the ceiling of the um, industrial trust building downtown, the Superman building in Providence. I noticed that while I was in there. But yeah. This is cool. The The way the nose cone is makes the boiler seem very small, though. Well, it, I, I can get the unstreamlined version to show you what it looks like underneath. You yeah, well, mind. you're very small, Ellis. And, more, and your penis. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I've been spent a long day. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. It just looks like the cone doesn't cover the whole thing. I, it's, I know it's a, I, it's a I, perspective I, thing. Uh... I sent it in the wrong channel. Uh-oh, where'd you but send it? Photo dump. Eh, close enough. I put it in there with the rest of them. 
Yeah, see, I mean, I oh. feel like if I, I feel like if I drew a line, right, underneath the streamlining, yeah, because, the, like, the, the little cover here, the smoke box cover itself, that curve goes down and stops at the running board, but the boiler itself goes lower than that. Yep. I don't know, it's just an interesting, yeah. uh, interesting yeah, design uh, choice. I have something yeah. else to add. What's that? Really quick, one get a second. I, um, so if you guys remember, and I've got them back and everything. Oh, have I been on since I was at the train show? I don't know. Uh, was I on the when last podcast? The like, two weeks ago? Then, then uh, probably not. I mean, I don't, were you here last? Two weeks ago was before the last podcast. Um. I don't think you were on. Um. I went to a train show, bought a bunch of stuff. Um, it was pretty cool. Okay. No, I was on. I was on. Um, but I I also, as you guys probably remember, got a bunch of uh, stuff painted. And, um, oh, no, I wasn't on. No, I wasn't on. I was um, going to say, I don't oh, think well. you were here. I went to a train show. It was cool. I bought a bunch of cars. I also got my freelance locomotives back. And I don't know. We probably sent pictures of them, but they're really cool. Um, the guy I paid to do them is actually making a video about painting one of them, which I like. Oh, cool. Um, that is really he's cool. Doing a, he's doing videos showcasing his methods on this one um, because it was a it was an undecorated model. And um, let me send you the just a general picture. So he did, I'm, it, I've, he did it from from butt from no from uh, uh what is it from uh, from from soup, soup to nuts? Is that what you're trying to, to say? Nuts. You can do it, TJ. I did it. Yeah, you did. No diddly bopping um, around. I also yeah, ran I my turbine. Ran he ran and the I... thing hard and fast with heavy loads, like the real engine. Yeah. I ran my turbine, which I sent a picture of. No. I won. The turbine I won. I know I talked about the turbine I won, and I think that's yeah. what I'm getting confused with. I won. I well, ran the turbine. About how you're going to sell it. But then I decided I ran it and said I can't sell it. And then, yeah. yeah. Is it, does so it pull real more. good? It pulls real good. Okay. Um, I have two more locomotives that I'm waiting for, including the one in the video, plus one more. So. But I'm in possession of them. And it was fun. That nice. you know, sounds pretty good, man. They, they, oh, yeah. they came out very nice. It's uh, right... It's quinoa and brown rice. Ew! What are you? <laughs> anyway, Liberal? all right. It's time to do. It's time to do the the next part of the podcast. Um, not it. <laughs> okay, that was good. All right, that was something. Wow, that was, that, was something. What, what did that sound like? It sounded that like a, no, 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 no. <laughs> it sounded like woo. <laughs> it was just a woo. <laughs> I put my headset mic in my mouth, so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, uh, we have we have a kegerator versus Sans Undertale. Can we get some photos of these, please? Actually, I'll go get the one for the kegerator. Um, <laughs> does anyone want to, like, represent this thing? Because I don't. I'm no. rep- I, I can represent the Guinness. Okay. I, I got I got the people who got both of them. Okay, that's, that's cool, because I was still scrolling. Please send them. <laughs> No, I mean both sands for I. Oh, Sorry, both sands for I. Oh, that's not. Out. No, okay, okay. Well, let me go back to scrolling then. Uh, I thought you were saying you had both photos. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Where is it? Here it uh, so is. So how is it? it and... What TJ? So how is everybody St. Patrick's Day? While we wait to start. Yeah. I uh, found a diagram for this boy. Looks cool. Appropriately, it ended in fights and and uh, chaos. So, yeah, well, that's the Irish way. Yeah. Um, all right. Of the hall. So yeah, the the Guinness locomotive, which was in the unfinished rail from Friday, and uh, Sanspari, which so this is, is the redemption. This is a redemption arc. Uh, I hope not. Well, wait. Maybe. Wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Depending, depending. Are, are you hoping for more fight? <laughs> um. That's um, 
Oh man, it, it, it's happening. It's English ver it's England versus Ireland with this one. Come on, get black and tan and fight me like a man. I somehow doubt this this uh ancient thing that I'm pretty sure predates the concept of steam locomotive is going to win, but you know what? Let's let's go for it. Um Kaiser and I hope you know what you're doing. I'm gonna award you the first first go. I think this is the most decent photo that I can find of me. Oh wait, hold on. I I didn't send the photo of you like an idiot. Was there gonna be like uh, is, uh... IRA music behind all this or? Okay, that's good. I mean, I I feel like no, but only <laughs> for copyright purposes. Yeah. If they, you want the full uh... experience, go look up some you know Celtic music or whatever, and just play it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. In another tab. Tinder water capacity. Okay. Okay. Uh, 96. 840. 96. Wait, how the hell? Yeah, it's not a lot. Okay, Sam's up to tail. Uh, alright. Well, he has a whole barrel. You are a whole barrel. That's... Yeah. That's True. the difference. I mean, he's also King. a barrel. Anyway, Kaiserin. Or she is. Uh, sorry. Tinder, tinder fuel capacity. Point two. Point five. Wow. Point? Yeah, point yeah. five. No locomotive should have point <laughs> blank amount of fuel, okay? <laughs> Well, when you're running around the McGinnis factory, <laughs> uh, is, is you really it, don't need to go the through the McGinnis factory. But I mean, if you want to run the thing like the real engine, I mean, you need more than 0.2 fuel. <laughs> it makes things. It makes things orange and takes all their money. You, That's the McGinnis factory. How are you supposed to? Uh, how are you supposed to pull heavy loads? Uh, driver diameter. Driver diameter 22. 54. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a not a surprise. Okay. All right, go ahead. I uh, can't call that one. <laughs> That's a, this I'm is just a seen. test of how much how much she remembers yeah. from the yeah. from the Royale, really. How much the both of you remember from the Royale? Well, Milky's got yeah. the thing. Too bad Sans Pry mm, wasn't Irish. Let's see. Uh... No. That would give us both a point. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh. Uh, loco base ID. Okay. Seven thousand five hundred eighty-five. Six hundred thirty-four. Why was okay. this so? Why? Why is it so low? I didn't even think this had a local base ID when we started this. <laughs> uh, I don't understand why it needs one. Okay, I'm I'm gonna take a. Uh, I don't think we did. We have that, Thank but God. we don't have a WP. Let's go with uh, high pressure cylinders. Uh -oh. High pressure cylinders. Seven by oh. eight. Seven by eight. And you have two of them? Yeah. Right. Well, I have 7.8 by 19, 19. And I have two of them. The humongous travel on these cylinders. Yeah, it, it, it's... They're vertical, too, so it's it's even worse. I mean, this is a... This is a... This is just a horseless carriage, is what this is. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what it is. I'm pretty sure uh, Sans Farai could... I could enter this in a horse race. I'd lose, yeah. but... Ooh. I have one. Tubes! Oh, no. The 54 by... 1.5. Oh, no, you're gonna win. You're gonna win. <laughs> because I have exactly one tube that is 12 inches in diameter. It just... That's, that's not a tube, that's a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's a sewer main right there. <laughs> Kaiser, it's got one 12-inch pipe. 
Well, no, it doubles back, so it's technically... Well, no, it's one. It's still one. But it doubles back. So it's 24 inches, or what? No. Or is it it's six and six? It's, it's just a, you know, it's like a water heater in there. <laughs> it's a pressure cooker. Yeah. Well, you might be able to cook some chicken in this. All right, well, Milky, well, you, you have a point by the graciousness okay. of Kaiserin. You're built. Oh, uh, 1829. 1887. Okay, but, but like, the concept of beer is much older, so. Yeah. Which came first, beer or horses? Horses. Beer. <laughs> the age-old question. Yeah, it's the age-old question. Uh, all right. Well, because beer was better to drink than the water at the time, so <laughs> beer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of all the horses. Okay, Interpol. number built. One. Eighteen. I feel like number Kaiser draft. could argue for two built. Uh, I'm going to be oh, honest. Well, I, could, I could technically argue for two built, yes. But, but. <laughs> but no, I, that's still less than eighteen. Yeah. Uh, what? Number in class? Yep. One. Nineteen. Uh, I don't know how what? much. Where, where did you get the extra here. one? I don't know. Oh. Probably like they ordered nineteen and they only got eighteen. I don't. I, sure. <laughs> I, one of them, one of them sent a canal boat to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the canal yeah. was also full of Guinness. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Chocolate River from Willy Wonka. Yeah, you just don't know what all the bubbles do. Oh, with all wheel base. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like uh, Big Rock Candy Mountain, except it's Ireland and all Guinness. Okay, overall wheelbase? Yeah. Sick. 11.4. Three. Three. <laughs> Bet you wish you didn't find that tender, Kaiserin. Well, um, it... I mean, still would have lost, but, you know. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a gamble here that probably will pay off. So oh. not, I'm going to take the gamble. Triber wheelbase. Uh, four point seven one. Okay, good. Three. It's, it's it's so small. It's like one in. It's Enter less than two base. foot gauge. Four point seven one. Three. I'm not gonna. Ha I'm not gonna go for that one because I know <laughs> what we are. <laughs> uh, do you have apps for loading, my friend? No. Whip. <laughs> We okay, don't know yeah, if this um, thing predates axles. I'm here. I'm just muting my mic, by the way. Okay. But I'm here. What is your border presser? Oh, no. Oof. Uh, I know yours is like 180. Yep. Yep. It's well, mine is 50. <laughs> Oof. I have I have tea it kettles. It really is a water eater. I have tea kettles really that do is. better than this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the pressure in my home my home uh, system is like 20 psi. Although I don't have I don't have steam. I have hot water. Uh, this is, a, uh 910. 2,726. I like how yours is three digits. 910 might be the lowest figure we've ever seen. But also, <laughs> this thing is setting a lot of precedent. Like, it's it's setting a lot of records, just not in a helpful direction. Just lowest tractive effort, lowest boiler pressure, uh, lowest, box area. lowest number of tubes. 15.7. Damn it. <laughs> Thirteen point seven five. Okay, we're gonna go with flu two blink. Okay. Okay, two point eight six. Eleven point twenty five. Yeah. Okay. You know, but now I have to explain this. The flu tube length is double the length of the boiler because the tube turns around and comes back. Yep. Your five dollar for on um, does a does a U turn. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, they they don't great area, great area. 
3.24. And? Ten. They don't do that on modern steam engines. The, the tubes don't, like, turn around and come back because they found that the steam would actually get lost. Yeah. Um, steam not found. Okay, that one's bad. Man, steam's so stupid. Yeah. yeah. That's why, That's why. you know, that's, thank God they made the Epic Game Store, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? No. I like Origin. <laughs> the, the worst you know, answer. I, I'm more of a you play kind of guy. Yeah. Ooh. No. Builder. Oh, no. Oh, no. William Spence. Hackworth. Hackworth is an actual shop. Yeah. Hackworth? Yeah. I, hold on, let me write this down to the goddamn document. William thinks it's a cool dude, but we don't give cool dudes. <laughs> Locomotive versus. We race. are Heckworth. Well, actually, no, it was another one that was a cool dude. Uh, Hugswell. Spark. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. Let me go. Let me scroll all the way down to like page 11 or whatever it is. Um, Heckworth also had his own valve gear, but he didn't put it on this locomotive for some reason. Uh. I can say that because I know Milky also does not have valve gear. Wait a minute. Hackworth? Oh, wait, no. Was was Hackworth just a dude? No, Hackworth had his own locomotive firm, but it was named after himself. Okay. Well, I just looked up Hackworth Locomotive Works and it didn't really come up with much. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Well, actually... And for I was built by two guys in the shed. Yeah. Well, I was trying. I That's was trying to give the benefit things. of the doubt. William here, but... Spence was also a guy in a shed, if you think about it. But I think yeah. William Spence might take it here. He, he might be a little bit more prolific in terms of builder. I don't know. No, a bunch of early locomotives were built by Hackworth. The only locomotives it's... that uh, William Spence built were the Guinness locomotives. Uh, let me look. That we know of. I don't... I guess so. I mean... I, I guess Hackworth gets something. I just don't know where he fits in this other listing here. I, I definitely think he's below Injacor. So... Insect music. Yeah, I, I guess I'll give it to Hackworth. He is kind, he is kind of... He is, one of the fathers of locomotives, so as evidenced hey. by Sans Farai here. <clears throat> but it's it's a guy in a shed versus a guy in a steel mill, and I don't really know. Two guys in a shed. Oh yeah. They've got the manpower advantage. Alright, uh well what else are you gonna go with? Uh let's go with uh that looks like a big number. Power L one. Power L one. My power L one is twenty eight sixty six. Twenty eight sixty six. And uh seven hundred twenty two. Oof. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that that is not in fact a large number. That is an oof. Uh. It looked large to me. <laughs> <laughs> oof. Okay. Amazingly, Hackworth wasn't even like it's not in my list of of locomotive builders that I had to organize. Because Hack it's wow. Hackworth. Yeah. Uh, or, you know what? Wobber Day Machine has power computation. Da, 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 da. This is gonna this is gonna be an interesting one. Five hundred. Five hundred eighty three. That's really funny. Same as above plus superheater. Oh my funny. god. 500. 583. It would be so wonderful if they figured out how to put a superheater into these things. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. Um, power MT. 297.44. 762.36. Okay. Hold on. We we have we have enough points on the board to go to style points. By the way, I don't know if you guys even want to do that. Well, let's do style points. It'll be easy. Oh, that's up to Milky. 
It'd be easy, oh. but also murder is easy. So. <laughs> okay, you heard it here first, I guess. <laughs> I'll take. Um, evaporative heating surface. Evaporative heating surface? Yeah. 90. Okay, balls. <laughs> never no, mind, it's not easy. Don't do it. Um, 86. Okay, Ellis, wow. I've got my point. I've got okay. my point right. Let's go to yeah. style points. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, we gotta we gotta do we gotta do judge's choice. Does anyone have a, a an idea for judge's choice? Because I sure as hell don't know what to do. Local base ID. We did that. Wait a minute. Oh, good. I that's what. Yep. Yeah, I knew, I knew that. I mean, I. Knew that. <laughs> I was testing you. Um. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, I enjoy game do, uh, I have. Do we do? We I do, uh, uh, what's the one, what's the 4.0 one, track factor of adhesion, do we do oh, that? Oh god, yeah. factor of adhesion, we have not oh. done that. Good grief. Okay, who goes first? <laughs> I mean, you guys, just go ahead, I mean. I volunteer for tribute. Okay. 6.08. That's bad. Get ready for the worst number <laughs> you've heard in your life. <laughs> Eleven point seventy five. I was gonna guess twelve. Yeah. I was gonna guess twelve. Oh my god, it's like double. Okay. I I didn't want to ask that one because I knew we were both bad, but I didn't think Kaiser was that bad. I don't Kaiser think Kaiser was that bad. I when when this engine was built, I don't think they had a concept of factor of adhesion. No. I I feel like no, they they didn't quite get that adding they, weight added adhesion and that made the train go although wait no if this is so obscenely high is that effective adhesion is weight divided by tractive effort right mm -hmm. uh, yeah, weight on drivers divided by tractive effort so this thing's just like too goddamn heavy and too goddamn weak which seems yeah. appropriate oh. when the boiler pressure is two uh, yeah. <laughs> well to be fair uh the replica does, in fact, move under its own power. I'm sure wow. it can move. That's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> and the stipulations for the Rainhill trials were essentially that it could haul, like, I think it was 10 tons. Well. Maybe. At maximum, was 10 tons. That's and that was I'm for beginning. all of them. Rocket <laughs> 1 still. I was... A two, a two, uh, or an 022 beat an 040. <laughs> I, when I was doing Bessigard on Tolbrand earlier, I was wondering why I was having so much trouble getting my train to come to a stop, and then I checked and I realized it was 2,000 tons, so... Is that a uh, lot of tons? That's that's a lot of tons. I mean, it was a lot of tons for the little, uh, the light Mikado I was running it around with. Anyway. Hackworth. Hey. Dial points. Um, okay. Oh, the company was called Fossick and Hackworth. Found it. Oh, yeah. Okay, do do so... we want to do? We we still need two other judges' choices. We only did one. I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask. Do you guys have any of the weights? Like, I would like to know. I would like to know total. I have weight. all. I, I have, have all that. Them. I think. Okay, give me your total locomotive weight, engine and tender. Okay, okay mine is 16,576. Mine is 17,900. Oh my god. Okay, I, I, I wanted to avoid that because I didn't know if it was heavier. Well, that's that's with the tender. It's heavier by a thousand yeah. I'm sure without the tender... Kaiserin is is lighter. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's interesting. Anyway, all right. So let's yeah, let's do style points. What do, what do I want, or what what do you guys want to like? Well, I would like my brass fittings point. Okay. The brass boiler bands. Okay, yeah. You have some cool, you have some cool shiny stuff. Uh, engraved nameplate. Okay, me too. Yeah, you guys both have... Wait, no. Well, were yours named? Well, engraved... Engraved number, brave, but... 
Yeah, cool. I think as far as, as plates go, it is at least even, if not in the favor of the Guinness things, because they have multiple. Okay. Um... But you do get a point for your name. Because I don't think the Guinness boys had names. No, oh, I was just number 13. <laughs> okay. Ooh. 100% survival rate. I technically, okay. I mean, you might even say 200% survival rate. Yeah. Okay, I could well, say I, I need a citation needed on this, but I'm pretty sure that mm -hmm. more Guinness engines survived. Than survived. I mean, either either way, we're going to assume that both you guys survive because it's per locomotive. Uh, so I'm just going to. I'm just gonna call that a wash. Yeah, I found I found like free. Yeah, like, no, you, yeah, yeah, but the original is still there. Yeah, okay, I, I'm draw. aware of that. But again, by locomotive, your your locomotive survives, and I'm yeah. going to assume that whatever the image, whichever one is in the photo here, survives. Or yes, both of them survive. <laughs> The the gray the black one is the original, and the John Deere looking one is the replica. Yeah, I don't. John Deere yeah. looking MF. <laughs> Ooh, paint point. Weren't moving things Deere also paint. green? We both, we both we both get that. Yeah. <laughs> you both get that. Because green red. Allegedly, the first locomotive fitted with a blast pipe. Allegedly, it's between, huh? it's okay. between this locomotive and Rocket being the first locomotives with blast pipes. Okay, that's cool. But let's just say one of the first locomotives with a blast pipe. I mean, I'll I'll, like, I'll give you the point on account of allegedly because I sort of feel bad for this thing. Yeah. Uh, um, but one of doesn't I have count. A side point for my standard gigs frat car. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That I could use. Yeah, the treadmill, if the, you will. Yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to find a name for it. You do have a treadmill. Ooh, multi fuel. What else Coal did you and burn? Coke. Oh, okay, Coke. Well, I... Coke. Not wood. Coal you... and Coke. The CB and Q tried that once, and it was terrible for them. <laughs> Well, see, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway had passed a law essentially saying that locomotives had to consume their smoke, so they had to burn co coke. But Sanspera couldn't burn coke, so when they tested on coke, they switched over to coal later on in its life. Huh. Hmm. That's cool. Okay. Uh, anything else? It's, um, what's the score? It's 17 to 14, which... Is I'm fine with going in there. more balanced than I expected out of this. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know about the uh, Guinness locomotive. I need a picture of the Guinness locomotive. Wait, can I get a style for grabbing I... hand whales? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. a little bit safer than yeah. than Sans Parai here, where you well, stand on Sans a platform per... and hope you don't die. Yeah. Well, Sans Pra could only go two miles per hour. Well, no, that I means mean, it could be a slow death. Yeah, yeah well, it's no, like I... the one scene in Austin Powers. Yeah. Oh, technically the world's first cab forward. Okay. You need a cab the for cab that. cab is on the front. You need a cab for I that. Know, there well, is no cab on this it... locomotive. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure... Well, I guess you don't have to... This is a... That's where the driver stands, is on the top. Why is this? This is a, that's right, now I remember. We had this discussion before the Royale, and I said I was going to be referring to this as a dude forward, not a cab forward. Okay. A, just, a lad forward. A lad forward, yeah, there we go. I'll give you a point. Okay, that, that's an amusing little platform there. That's the, the, it's where you get to, just stare into the eyes of the person that you were about to crash into. Yeah. <laughs> at incredibly low speeds. Yeah, I just, I just have the feeling, like the, I, the word. Well, there's your problem. The uh, 
atmospheric railway guy on a flat car. Yeah. Uh, I imagine that, except it's these guys going downhill, holding on to the uh, railing as they're going faster than they've ever gone in their life. And then... Uh-oh. And they see the end of the track up ahead, and they're like, oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, but, this thing doesn't have very good brakes. But for the record, faster than they've ever gone in their life is seven miles per hour. Yeah. Uh, they are going to hit the buffer and fall over. And Bonk. and but the thing is, like they'll get small cuts, which will become infected, and they'll still Ooh. die because there's yeah. no antibiotics. Ooh, I, ha I have two more style points before we cut this <laughs> oh, off. Oh God! Uh, but... uh, media appearance. It was in Thomas the Tank Engine. Okay. Thank Christ! Of course it was. I can, I can prove that by this, this image. I don't. Do I want to see the if image? It'll send. Yeah, you do. Uh. And, Jesus uh, Christ, I hate this I so doing? much. Oh my god. And what? Have... In the... Okay. <laughs> hold on, horrible. hold on, hold on. But the fact that the made... driver stands in the front just means this guy's gonna have his face, <laughs> like, on your balls at all times. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one is, oh, no. uh, I have a live Steam model. Okay, well, I have scale model. That's a good. Okay. Uh, do you have a live Steam model? I mean, that's again, it's a wash. Those two are those two are equivalent. Sure. I'll give you guys the points Ooh, for each I of have them. A, I have a trains model. Oh, that's right. You I know I have a that trains model because I had it downloaded. Okay. I don't believe I do. I don't think you do. Although it would Although be fun I to. Just found... Yeah, no, you don't. You don't. I remember this discussion for the rail. Okay. Although I did find the 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 scale model of me. It uh, is now eighteen to nineteen. <laughs> which is closer than than this should have been. Well, see now you know that these locomotives are really close, but the Guinness locomotive is slightly better. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know if we I buy that. I feel like we should do like a Rain Hill Trials Royale because there's five locomotives from that. <laughs> oh, if we can get if we can get stats for all of them, like reasonable amounts of stats, and if I ever want to do a Royale again, uh, then maybe Guinness locomotive wins uh, by the points, which is nineteen to eighteen, which is insane, um, and. Who are we voting for? I'm gonna vote for I'm gonna I'm voting for Sans Undertale. I also will vote for Sans Undertale. I'm gonna vote for the Guinness. All right. And Sans Pariah by the votes. Two to one. All right. All right. Uh, we are actually doing pretty well for time here. Uh, yeah. Let's go on to the. The five, new. The this five is where we're gonna lose it. The is where we're gonna lose it. Yeah, no, we're, well, we're totally. Over... I, I need to text my mom now and be like, "Yo, I'm not making it." Um, what do we want to get out of the way first? What's short? Well, the yeah, bright the line. things. Okay, well, yeah, that works. Bright really line's cool. pretty short. You can essentially <laughs> just say, "Hey, we they did a 130 mile an hour." Woo! They did. Woo. Um, like it's the. One of the it's the first time in recent history that's happened. I, I wouldn't say it's the first time in U.S. history it's happened because it's definitely happened before. The Northeast Corridor does all the Yeah, the Northeast <laughs> Corridor does 130 every day, but this is notably not an Acela doing 130. And it's no V, not Amtrak. <laughs> yes, also true. And it's also in the South. Which is if also consider, true. If you, consider, if you can consider Florida South. It's... Florida. I do. I it's I it's sort of in the same not category as Texas to me. It's like you have the South and then you have Florida as its own thing and Texas as its own thing because they have too much of their own identities. Where yeah. the man can't be stopped. Yeah. And we all know the thing about Brightline has essentially run over every Florida man in history. Uh, it keeps happening. You think they might learn? No. They're Florida, man. 
East it's, will kill me for that. It's no, East will agree with you. Is the thing. He's he's like the most forcefully spoken person I've seen with regard to. It's just, I it's, I'm surrounded by idiots and they keep stepping in front of the train. That's that's the vibe that I get from East when Bright Line is discussed. <clears throat> right now he's on a plane, I think. Which is probably going faster than 130, but it would be better if he was on a train. We should yell at him. I mean, he doesn't really have too much of a choice. I was going to take the train down to to visit him when he was in D.C. He was just in D.C. I was going to go and meet up with him in Baltimore and go to the museum. Because, in Baltimore. Yeah. And I ended up not being able to... Mostly because I had to take the cat to the vet that morning, um, oh. on Saturday morning, but also because it was expensive, um, because it was kind of short notice, like, he told me as soon as he knew about it, but it was, like, less than a month ago. It was a couple weeks uh, ago, and I'm sitting there looking at these fairs and going, like, I don't think I have the money to do this, even though I really want to see you, and even though I really want to go to the B&O Museum, because I've never been. I have been to Baltimore once. But I've never been to the to the museum, and yeah, I, I couldn't justify it, really. And Gloria would have been high and dry with regard to getting the cat to the vet. But I did kind of think, what if I managed to do this as a day trip on the train and not like just for fun, right? Not tell Gloria and see if I could quote unquote get away with it. Like, would they ask if I said, like, oh, I'm going to go to the PN in the morning and then I'll go over to my dad's house or whatever, and instead I'm on a train, like, five hours away? <laughs> I, I didn't... That would have been something. Hmm? That would be something. I, I just... And I, I told them about it afterward, and I just got, like, the biggest eye roll. Side eye. Yeah. Side eye. Like, what if, um, you know, what if I, I, I ran I'm, away? I'm just letting y'all know, I'm, I'm still going to be here, but I'm muting myself. Okay. Why? I said a... Oh, well, never mind. She's dead. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm yeah. going to go next. Okay. So. Well, I was kind of set up a thing about the fares on the on the uh, NEC being too high. Okay, then, then do it. And in case, you know, there was any sort of, like, major important news about that. Nah. Mm. Okay. Nah, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Spike! Um, <clears throat> according to the most recent, this recent trains article, uh, Amtrak will be taking a portion of one of its Hellgate line uh, tracks out of service. That's that's not the article that you were referencing, but there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, the takeaway yeah. from that article for me is was that it's Hellgate and not Hell's Gate. Yeah, I don't know I why I've Hell's always Gate. thought it was Hell's Gate. Because Hellgate Bridge sounds weird. It does. Yeah. But it makes sense. I mean, I get you it. You know what else is weird? The gate to Hell. Please say Amtrak Prices. Amtrak prices are weird. Whoa. Whoa. Weird. Whoa. Weird. Well, good thing for you. Uh, <laughs> after you pay those expensive fares, you will get, finally, on the Western trains, food. That's... Yay. I can get food. <laughs> I don't know what track. you're talking about. <laughs> DJ is taking the longest um... walk to get to the segue that I set him up for, and I'm upset. Yep. Uh, so, uh, now a limited number of seatings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner are being offered to coach travelers on trains at a fixed price. Uh, Can I get one right now? Actually, train... I'm freaking hungry. Yeah, trains <laughs> meaning the Empire Builder, the California Zephyr, Southwest Chief, Coast Starlight, and Sunset Limited. Uh, That's so great, because people... I'm riding that train next month. Yeah, people were like, uh... Um... <laughs> uh... People were upset that they got rid of the good food on the train, because yeah. eating good food on the train is like a tradition. And uh, 
now they're uh, they're like, hey, maybe we should investigate bringing this back. Well, in fairness, they didn't. This isn't uh, a case of them getting rid of the food. They just made it. Uh, what's the word? This was the dining cars were only available to. Uh, you know, oh, the sleeper, like, right? yeah, right. sleeper yeah, passengers. Right. Like I, the the yeah. word was escaping me, and so the, finally they've opened it back up to all the passengers on the train. Uh, uh, let's, uh, what's quickly? What's Amtrak's cancellation policy? Oh no, I I don't know. Call them and and maybe they'll be nice to you. They've always been super helpful on the phone. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can cancel up to relatively close, as long as yeah, you yeah. have a ticket that allows you to do so. Some of them are not yeah. refundable. Oh, Ellis, I was oh, thinking yeah, nice. of, I was thinking of this uh, Silver Star article. Oh, uh, which one? The Reddit link one. Oh, oh, yeah, them bringing the uh, the traditional dining back to... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's multiple things going on with Amtrak dining right now, which is why... Yeah, basically they're together. trying to make it less like airlines. Well, they're trying to make which it more like good. it used to be. Yeah. yeah, which is less like airlines. <laughs> Unfortunately, they have to go backwards to... Like, like, just think about like what a waste of money that was. Yeah. Like, well, to if... change their entire dining thing to be like boxed foods and then like now they have now they're changing parts of like a lot of it back or some of it back well like, what's funny kinda... is it got chopped up like that by anderson uh yeah, yeah. and the airline the uh... yeah, and yeah the it airline was... guy the delta guy yeah and it was <laughs> yeah. it kind of worked out because they would have had to do that during covid anyway um, yeah true. It's, that's it's... true it just set them up really well for it i <laughs> It's weird that that is, like, the one thing where I can look at and go, like, well, yeah, this was a terrible idea, but it did work out because of this extremely extenuating circumstance yeah. that no one could Basically have seen like coming. Basically, like, uh, yeah, by sheer luck, it worked yeah. out for them. And finally, um, we're getting back to this. Also, uh, just as an aside, based off of the NEC, uh, someone, I'm trying to get iRacing working in the background, and... <laughs> Okay. This person's server is named Northeast Corp, like NEC practice, and they're based out of Boston, so they must right. must be on the NEC somewhere. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um. Anyway, um. Speaking of being on the NEC somewhere, you know what's not on the NEC somewhere? Lancaster Station. <laughs> that's that's true. It is on the Keystone yeah. Corridor. It is on the Keystone Corridor, but a lot of people lump it in with the Northeast services because it's like the same sort of frequency and. Stuff like that it's also the only other one that's electrified yeah yeah it's like in uh, i consider it the northeast corridor even though it's it not the northeast corridor it's a, like, it's a like brand... it is by definition not the NEC, it, it, but... it's the northeast branch sign I, I was, <laughs> yeah if ojilis let me finish i was going to say it's basically just a branch off of the northeast corridor do you ever finish uh that's what not a podcast the question, hell okay. um yeah. You know what is a podcast question? What's going on at Lancaster train station? And uh, I'm sorry, TJ. Uh, oh, they're building some stuff. They're doing it, some stuff. It, hold it on, looks... hold on. There's the link to the stuff. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, Maybe. the thing is, it looks real pretty. Um, but south of the train station, still looks like car centric awfulness. Uh, it has like a nice park. These streets look very wide from up here. Yeah, I mean the yeah, some of the stuff is nice. The um, the roads that are just south of the train station are much much wider than this rendering. Right. So like, it's not like you said. It's not like you know Amsterdam with narrow streets and crap. But yeah, uh, it... it it's better than it is because it's barely that area is barely walkable. They just redid the. Uh, and I, when I say just, I mean like a few years ago now, they redid the like passenger drop off, like bus station area out front. Mm-hmm. So like they redid it in a good way for that, but I don't think it really did what they wanted it to do. And I don't think the plan was like, extensive enough. Um, so I think this is like the next. Yeah, it is still a road path. diet. It's going down from four lanes to three, which is. Like, it just didn't look that good on these renders. And I no. think it'll end up looking better in real life than it does here. Uh, I also, um, 
yeah i don't know it's just cool to see that station uh is like a really it says here that uh the station is the second busiest in pennsylvania and the 21st busiest in the united states mm -hmm. uh which i didn't realize it was that popular but the station for what it like it's a really historic station um but also like it needs work <laughs> it's not in the best shape they have they it's always under construction because it's like falling apart um so it's cool to see them actually like caring about it again and making a plan for it um lancaster, lancaster has a lot of room to grow in terms of it does. what they can do yeah. with the city it's a nice place it's a really charming city um it's got a lot You're of really charming teacher. thank you a lot of artists um there's an arts college down there uh that's right in downtown uh, just like most, like, sort of gentrified downtown <laughs> areas. Um, yeah. Uh, I wish I had more time to, to spend while I was here, just, like, screwing around in Lancaster. Because when mm. I was there for the Fiat Freakout, it's just all the pre-planned events. Uh, you know, are we going to yeah. go for a drive here, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that. Not like, hey, let's have yeah, a night out on the town. You know, one of my favorite yeah. things to do is go to the central market, which is an old style farmer's market, just in a giant market, mm -hmm. basically, like, you know, the Reading market. Ellis? Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. But uh, or the Reading terminal market, it's like that. But it's uh, only open like in the mornings and there's all kinds of like fresh stuff and Amish vendors and stuff. It's a really, really nice place to go and buy stuff. Damn, the like Reading terminal stuff. market is such a cool place. I know this is, is totally not relevant, but like. Man, I'm hungry. I want. I want. I want to go. <laughs> I need like um, to be surrounded by 17 different restaurants at the same time. I need to be yeah, overwhelmed well, by choice. Next up, another train no segue from this on one. The <laughs> no segue other than this one's also not on the northeast corridor. <laughs> uh, our friends at the BNSR are. Uh... Did you delete links? Yeah, I did. Please, please don't. Oh, okay. I need to take those. Thank you. How dare you, DJ? Um, they have, first of all, they have an address. That's Good. a big step. Second of all, they have a building permit for a few hundred feet of track with a 15 by 40 open, uh, open air pavilion structure, which is very cool. Um, Probably going to look like just... all, uh, all the center when it's done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> most likely. Um, it's just a quick little aside. Um, I didn't find the article. I don't know why I couldn't find it, but the uh, Northeast Corridor is doing some new. Yes, here it is. Amtrak sale. The oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's why it was a long walk because it wasn't actually in your list. Yeah, I couldn't find Oops. it. That's why I didn't think it was a sale. I thought it was just like a permanent thing. I didn't really know what else to call it. Um, I, I guess yeah, just a fair their reduction. Yeah, so now if you were a business person or a politician looking to go from New York City to D.C. or anywhere in between, or I think point south too, right? Um, um, yeah, Wilmington. Oh, wait, you know, Wilmington is north. Oh, I was so, thinking. so pretty much D.C. to New York City, anywhere in between. Yeah. The... Uh, you, can get on, you can go in the middle of the night that won't interrupt your work. <laughs> Uh, it's like a red eye, taking the red eye for very, very little money. Like some of, some of these fares, like from, I think from Boston or from not Boston, from New York city to DC, it was only like 25 bucks. Uh, honestly, good. some of them are even, uh, New York to DC for 20, New York to Baltimore for 15. Yeah. It's like, DC those are to New York for prices. 15. <laughs> it's Amtrak's actually kind of cheap. It's, it's like, it's not even 200 bucks for me to go from, uh, Flagstaff to San Diego. Yeah, I mean, I took the train from Boston South Station to Providence. Uh, that I bought a ticket uh, five minutes before the train left, and yep. I paid seventeen bucks. Well, when is... you when you miss the MBTA train, like when I'm doing train counts and people miss their train, which is about one person every train on average, yeah. um, it's you know you read the line between it being very funny and being you know kind of like oh that poor guy. Um, yeah, I always try to catch it, those it, people uh, before especially they, when they like, run. Yeah. I always try to catch those people before they mope their way out of the station and call an Uber and be like, just go up to the Amtrak counter, tell them what happened. You should be able to get a cheap ticket on the, whatever yeah. the next train is, which will probably be here in 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, and you'll get there yeah. in half the time, too. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so Red Eye Trains for Hella Cheap. And just to clear it up, there is a. Um, it's called the Night Owl Take Night Owl Fairs, but they are not only applicable to the formerly known as Night Owl Trains. Yeah, it's just all of the more. really light like, trains. Yeah, that's why I said formerly. Yeah. Formerly, yeah. Anyway. That exists for like two weeks and then stops existing again. I mean, it's just uh, whenever yeah, they on. feel like getting a freaking uh, coach to tack onto the end of the. The, or the a sleeper car to tack onto the end of the train there, that's that's what it is. It it has come and gone multiple times over the last like couple of years. I'm pretty sure it has to do with equipment. <sighs> the N- MBTA. Speaking of equipment, MBTA is struggling as usual. Our weekly biweekly topic. Uh, MBTA bad. MBTA slow. Mm-hmm. MBTA, please fix. They shouldn't be this. MBTA news- doesn't work. They shouldn't be this newsworthy. Is the is no, the thing. They really they, we should not be talking about them this month. They got a slow order put over the entire system, and we still don't know why. Uh, there was some sort of breakdown, I think. Yeah, but th- th- what's th- new? The whole like every line. I have no clue. <laughs> I I don't know. I remember. He- I've heard, like, I don't remember. I, don't, I, I remember hearing rumors, but I don't remember what specifically they were. Like, I've just heard, like, from, like, local news and from, like, Reddit and stuff, like, a bunch of speculation. But like I said, I don't remember any of it well enough to Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we've heard anything concrete is the crazy thing. Yeah, no, it was just, like, a week ago, this article came out, like, hey, uh, we discovered a problem and we're instituting slow orders over the entirety of the system. Not, like, the commuter rail, but everything else. Uh, yeah, out of an abundance of caution, the red, orange, blue, and green lines will operate at speeds of 10 to 25 miles per hour. Uh, following findings by the Department of Private Util- Public Utilities during a recent site visit of the red line between Ashmont and Savin Hill. What nice. the hell? Uh, what is so wrong that on account of one site visit, you are able to slow order every yeah, line? I- it must, it must, they must be like rattling the sewers apart or something. Yeah. They're like, "Yo, like these, these two hundred year old water mains are gonna burst if we keep running oh trains." Oh my god! Oh, at least <laughs> you know what they have relieved. They have uh, released the slow order on a couple of the lines. I um, think it's all except the green line now. Is it okay? That's good. Because I have the article here for the when they released. I saw this, they, I saw the local news yesterday morning when I was grabbing coffee with Cat. We were waiting for our food, and the local news was on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they were saying all but the green line. Okay, well that's good. The green line is not that fast anyway. They released it. They uh, released it. Yeah, lifted the speed restriction on the Mattapan trolley, which, incidentally, I don't think you'll be able to tell the difference. But no, no. Uh, yeah, it's it's and so it's bad, bad, and I don't know why. I, I think that, I, I mean, honestly, I think the feds need to step in, man. Maybe, like, yeah. In, like in, my, in my opinion. Because they, it, it like, over the summer, people were like, man, maybe the the feds should step in. And MBTA was like, no, 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 we got this, we got this, we got this. And then they went downhill. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I don't know how they managed to, I, I don't know how it manages to keep getting worse, but it keeps yeah. getting worse. So I think, I think. Something something drastic needs to happen. Yeah. Um, speaking of something drastic and kind of crazy, my final oh, article. So oh, I thought you were transitioning to me. Damn. No, sorry. This is even crazier than what you were talking about. This is. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, according to this website, BostonUncovered.com. <laughs> A two, which I've never heard of before, but they're not, they're citing someone else. They're not just like spitballing. Yeah. 200 mile an hour train is en route to connect Boston and Manhattan. So you're like, okay, they're going to get faster service on the NEC, right? Yeah, totally. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. The bullet train from Boston to New York City proposes speeds of 220, 25 miles an hour that would slash the commute in half to about 90 minutes. The North Atlantic Rail Initiative wants to build out the 90-minute train ride between Manhattan and Boston and notes this project would take up to 20 years to build out with a not-so-subtle price tag of $105 billion. What could they possibly be doing? 
I well, yeah, it's like everything everything to this point, it's just okay, well, yeah, if you want to, you know, do if that's what you want to do, if you're going to try to get yeah, speeds of like 225 miles an hour, you're going to have to invest a lot into a thing. It's just, you know, yeah, what are you going to do, straight in some of the NECO? Yeah. Like, what's going on here? Well, here we go. It's, the it's, project it's... would be rolled out in phases and touch upon major northeast cities like Boston, Providence, and New York City. Oh, I skipped one. Hartford. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go over to the middle of Connecticut. Yeah. And hit Hartford. And, and then, then turn. And then, and then turn. And then go south to New Haven, and then keep going south through Long Island Sound to Ronkonkoma, yes. and then yes. and then come into New York City. Japan here. Here's what the, uh, Japan, China, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, South Korea, and Taiwan are some of the countries already commuting on bullet trains integrated into their transit systems. France and Egypt are also looking to build out 205 mile per hour bullet trains. California also has a bullet train in the works and similar to the mm. Northeast situation has been faced with a lot of red tape further delaying construction. There's no denying that this new bullet train would reduce the predicament of traveling between Boston and Manhattan. Is there a predicament? I mean, the yeah, predicament yeah. is that you could take an Acela and because of the wibbly wobbly Stonington line, uh, it doesn't take you <laughs> much less time. Oh. Than here we go. There's Here we something go. that connects all of these other uh, countries that have bullet trains to to, or that they connect all of them, but ha hasn't happened to us yet. Uh, they've all been bombed into oblivion by somebody. <laughs> that's, that's that's funny. Funny. It, it really does a good job of clearing all this space out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I found the NA. I found the NAR. But you're gonna say NAU, and I was like, you found NAU. He's at yeah. your window. Um, this is first of all, Bloomberg released an article about this a year ago, two years ago. I thought you were gonna say this is a bomb, and they oh my god, Ellis, I was right. <laughs> Wait, no, why? What, what were you right about? It is an audacious vision for high speed rail in the Northeast, new tunnels out of New York City and under the Long Island Sound, routing trains up through Hartford, Providence, what? and Boston. Well, yeah, this is going to go well. This is a good construction idea. Construction would consume 20 years and require building the largest underwater tunnel in North America. Listen, I can see because it's there a are private initiative. Yeah, no, oh. this is that's reason number 365 where this is not going to happen. <laughs> but I can see an idea, right? If we look at this map, which I'll just put the map in for everyone to look at once again. Uh, sad, sad map. You know, this isn't the map TM, but there have been other proposals that involve avoiding most of Western Connecticut's existing, or sorry, Eastern Connecticut's existing right of way, because it is the twistiest son of a gun. It was built by the predecessors to the New Haven in, excuse me, like the 1840s, and it has not changed very much. Um, and if you were to just sort of move the main line up a few dozen miles, just north, into the middle of nowhere Connecticut because the entirety of Eastern Connecticut is, is basically empty. Um, you could get a pretty dead straight line. However, that is most of the problem. Most of the problem is not between New Haven and New York City. You've got four tracks there. They're relatively straight compared to the other section that we're talking about. And yes, this plan has one good idea, which is you tie back in at Providence, and then you run on the existing Northeast Corridor from there to Boston, because it is extremely straight. Um, yeah. But I don't know why, if you're going to do this, you cross Long Island Sound at the widest point. It just... You have, they'd have to tunnel under Hartford, too. I mean, you... you I don't know what you would do when you get to Hartford. I don't know how you would get out of there and take a take a right. Uh, you'd probably have to go further north. The project makes use of existing rights of way from New Haven area to Hartford, but then requires yet another tunnel under Hartford, new tracks through environmentally sensitive areas in eastern Connecticut, and still another tunnel. The North-South Rail Link under the Big Dig in Boston. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we found another reason why this isn't going to happen. 
What? This is just bad and bad. Oh, it gets worse every sentence. This is just... <laughs> we we have the most pie-in-the-sky idea for how to connect these two railroads. You know what this is? This is the modern version of the New York the and map. New England airline. Oh, that's true. This I was is just say, that. This is the new the map, but yes. What's the New York and New England airline? Can it you was. Know? It was a competitor to the New Haven, which was. They tried to trace a straight line between Boston and New York City ish, but of course you can't really do that. And there's like hills and stuff, and it turned into this engineering hellscape, um, with like embankments that are eighty feet tall and. Uh, trestles that ended up having to get buried because they were too spindly and couldn't support the weight of trains. It and and tight turns which limited your speed and it avoided it managed to successfully avoid all the populated areas so no one was riding this train. Uh, and to Man, add, all the unions are behind this. Well, I'm sure that it'll give them plenty of work <laughs> to do. Yeah, um, Grow Smart Rhode Island, Discover Long Island, Chamber of Commerce, Connecticut, uh, the ACI, wow. the AICU. It is really easy for these, you know, these institutions to be like, yeah, cool. Yeah, this sounds like a great <laughs> exactly. idea. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, their skin's would, not I, in the game. That's what I'd say. I'd be yeah, like, yeah. sure, go ahead. You know what? If, <laughs> if someone was just like, yeah, I have unlimited dollars, I'm going to build this. I would say, okay, but this is not a cost-effective <laughs> way to do this. Uh, there are so yeah, many yeah. other alternatives. Like, just, if you really wanted to do this at high speed, you either... Just do the part between Hartford and Providence, and you deal with the rest of it. Or, if you want high speed between these two locations, you make a better connection between Pittsfield and the northbound Empire service, and well, you double-track of... Western Mass and just gun it, you know? Yeah, well, part of their thing was bolstering a bunch of the Amtrak services too. That's like part of the plan. Well, I would hope so, but you know. Um, but here, okay, so Ellis, I hear you. You're being a real uh, skeptic right now, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, this is what they gotta say, okay? Bronin, the Hartford mayor, has a sweet, similarly sweeping pitch. Quote, in this country which built the Transcon and the interstate highway system, we've forgotten what it means to think big and be bold when it comes to infrastructure investment, he said. Projects like this might have seemed futuristic or pie in the sky 30 years ago, but at this point, dozens of industrialized nations have completed projects as ambitious, if not more ambitious, than this. It's because they've been bombed into oblivion <laughs> by somebody. And they have. It's because they, have. They, doing, it's because they keep doing a socialism, that's why. It's oh, there's, there's lots of reasons why this has been managed to be pulled off in other countries, and I'm not saying that it would be impossible to pull off here. Uh, with the we right just need investment, to get bombed into oblivion. <laughs> no, stop! No, uh, that should be the pod. That should be the uh, podcast name. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna name this episode. Uh, oh, what the hell was I gonna name it? I was gonna you name it the Lad Forward. Um, um, but I like bombed into oblivion. Okay, I too want to die on boiler explosion. Yeah. Uh, Oh, right. I should say, just boilerplate. The easiest way to get a train from New York City to Boston and avoid all this kerfuffle is a train cannon. Uh, we should be investing in that. Yeah. But yeah. The um Like I don't yeah, think this is impossible. I just think this is a there. bad way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would serve them much better. Well, they said that this one is also because of climate change. And so they're like, yeah, we need a more inland rail corridor. Then don't put it on Long Island. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That like some problem. It's like, yeah, but we're still going to put it on freaking Long Island. We're going we're gonna to put it on Long Island, and we're going to build the longest tunnel in the Northeast between Stony Brook no, and New Haven. In the United, in the United States. Yeah, probably in the U.S. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It might give the, the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel a run, a run for its money. Uh, but maybe the tunnel, the tunnel sections on that are actually fairly short, so yeah. yeah. But still, I wonder what the longest underwater tunnel in the Americas is. I'll expand it to the Americas. Because... Bobby the... Port Hula? Maybe. I don't, I don't Probably know. Uh, the, wouldn't the Erie Tunnel, what is, whatever it called, the uh, St. Clair Tunnel? No, right that there. one's pretty short. It is? Yeah, that one's yeah. short. Yeah. Um, 
because it's just going under the river. Like this is going under an entire scent. Just you know what? I'm gonna measure this really quick, just so everyone gets an <laughs> idea. Uh, yeah. And I know that we have other topics to cover, and we've got like 30 minutes to do it. But or actually, maybe less than that. But Stony Brook, right here. Let's see if they go to the very end of Strong's neck, and then they come up here. I'll say that you don't even go to New Haven. They come up here at Short Beach or or here at the coastal whatever center. I mean, it's not insane. It's a 14-mile long underwater tunnel. It's not the channel by any means, but oh. it's still a distance. It's still a ways. Yeah. Um, the, the channel, for the record, is like, what, 23 miles? Some odd, yeah. Somewhere around there. It would be comparative to that. And that's an engineering feat. Uh, yeah. Definitely something we could do if we put our mind and money towards it. But why? Yeah, yeah I feel like well, it's just like, we got bigger fish to fry, guys. Yeah. Just like go getting the back. Yeah. Get the NEC up to speed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even still. Even, get the Lackawanna even cut off. The, yeah. Give us the Lackawanna cut off. Even just do the bit in Eastern Connecticut and call it a day. That would that would be like good. Like I don't. Yeah. I have selfish reasons why I don't want that to happen, but at least it's a good idea. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Lots of people didn't want like CPKC to happen, but here but we unfortunately, are. Unfortunately, it did, and here we are. So, uh, in case you've unless you've been living under a rock. I am. Uh, you've, oh, okay. Well, so, you Milky, have you ever heard of Kansas City Southern? Milky, say no. Uh, no. No. <laughs> okay. No, they don't insist. Okay. Have you ever heard of Canadian Pacific? Yeah, I, I've heard of them. I heard they of, I last that, heard of Canadian that. Pacific on February 7th, 2023, when they derailed at Mount McDonald. No, I actually heard about them when they still had the Bieber on their engines. They still have the Bieber on their engines. Okay. Well, they put it back. Yeah. They put it back like we need to put the Ever Given back. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so basically, uh, in case you've been living under a rock, well, we're going to start from the start. We're going to start from the start. So, we're going to start with... Senator Warren from of Massachusetts. Wait, hold on. Which that's that's, that's, a, that's not the start. We need to talk about this Hackworth guy. He invented a locomotive. Yeah. Uh, the Big Bang. Oh no 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 no! You need to go back to Trevithick in 1802. <laughs> he invented yeah. the locomotive. Why? Why? Wait, hold on. Quick and then this guy named George Boston, Griggs invented the firebox. I have the Boston Uncovered article up, and why is this like like little header thing? Just we miss you. I clicked away at it immediately. <laughs> I know it's so weird. I, don't know why I, that. I didn't notice that. I still have it open. <laughs> I just looking at it. I, I, what a I know loser! You. It's an incredibly clingy website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start from. Uh... <laughs> we only got like twenty minutes here, and we don't need to start from anything. From, They're two class gonna... ones. They made one class one. Yeah. On March sixth, Massachusetts Senator for some reason called on the STB to reject the CPKCS, which was saying it failed the public interest test. Well, get uh, right. didn't really give give many reasons why. Um, <laughs> she wants to run uh, for president in twenty twenty four. That's all. It would reduce competition in an already highly consolidated market and could increase shipping costs. Okay. Uh, then the STB, like two days later, uh, or like a week later, said, we're going to announce the uh, CPKCS merger decision on Wednesday, March 8th, as if they couldn't just say, okay, yes or no. Uh, and then They're announcing um, the announcement. It's like, who was that last episode that announced an announcement? Oh. It was uh, it was, it was some some museum it, out it west. Was, um... Oh, it was the Western Railway Museum. Oh, okay, yeah, and then it was something really lame, wasn't it? Yes. No, uh, and then and, it turned out to be the LA car. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then on April 14th, or on March 15th, uh, the announcement to the announcement was that the CPKCS merger was approved, unfortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it and depending on how much of a former you are. Um, so, uh, anyway, that's that. So, CPKC is going to happen. Um, I'm, from what I understand, it'll probably 
In reality, everybody tells me it'll operate as two separate companies, but in reality, what will happen is it will just become CP. Everything will just say CP. Yeah. Um, From and uh, so you have until April 14th to get the true KCS, and uh, until basically you have until uh, really for a couple more years to get any CP KCS power before it's pretty much all repainted. I mean, so. If if SP is anything to go by, if SPUP is anything to go, to go by, you oh, have a lot CP's more than like a couple years. You've but CP is good at it. You've got time, okay? Yeah. Um, but uh, as a condition of the merger, CN requested the Springfield line, which is KCS Springfield line to Springfield, Illinois, that like never is used. Oh, did they actually um, give that up? But they, the STB said no. Oh. Lol. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> And their first trains that they're going to be hauling, they've already run test trains, were uh, perishable shipments across the border. Anyway, uh, that's that. And um, yeah, you so have basically like probably three or four years to get any decent CP KCS, KCS power before it all becomes CP power. They're, all, so they're already doing like joint ops as one. Yeah, they already are. They're also, uh, they're also already like... They've also already mostly integrated the KCS system. They did kind of pull an SPSF and integrate the symbols, um, but they didn't paint anything, and they didn't share assets yet. Uh, they do now. And uh, like I say, they've already run test trains. They're double tracking and uh, upgrading a lot of track, uh, and they expect trains to go up by, you know, a considerable margin uh, on most of their traffic or most of their lines. Um, for example, the uh, Kansas City Southern currently sees, but south of Kansas City currently sees 10 11 trones per day, and that's expected to, to jump up to 25. Um, what about so the uh, Meridian Speedway? The Meridian Speedway, uh, um, it doesn't actually have that listed for some reason. Well, it's but, ACS. But the trains article doesn't have that listed, so I don't know, but assuming it'll probably go up too, although that's like half NS, so we'll see on that one. They, they forgot about Shikaiser. They, they're like, the what speedway? We own this? We do speed? I Oh, man, I had an what article. About the, what, are they saying, what are they saying about the Gulfport sub, too? That's all. That, that, none of that area is listed. Huh. Oh, well. Yep. Typical well. northerners. <laughs> hey, these are, these are the way northerners. These are the great white northerners. Yes. Uh, whoa, whoa, why are they so no, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> Actually, do say that. Actually, do. Wait. All right, Milky. I'm segueing to you. Speaking of things, I'm segueing to you, he says. <laughs> My guy. Um, well, Norfolk Southern did a big hacking main recently that wasn't derailing for what? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. But they sold a portion of wear that they probably would eat, sit, and die on if they still land over it. <laughs> They're um, doing it for their own safety. That's why they got rid of it. They were afraid of it. <laughs> yeah. And that is the famous Thruda grade. Rip. Known for having a <laughs> segment of 4.7% grade and I think 5.3%. Oh, no, 5.1 on the other side. Uh, at the summit at Suruda. And also known for the one infamous Southern Railway training video that has a bomb soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they sold it to a group that is from the converted to a trail. When... And usually I rag on rail trails for being just stupid most of the time, but this one actually makes sense. I mean, because this... who the hell is going to run a tourist train with free cars and, like, two F units going up the grade <laughs> <laughs> in today's society? <laughs> you're, you need you need to turn it into a cable way. Yeah. You're a car. And, you, and you're never going to run a steam engine over this. If uh, such ever installs out of this hill, you cannot do it. It'd be like cable hauled going up one side and gravity yeah. fed going yeah. down the other side. World's yeah. first and fastest roller coaster downhill salute a grade 
one hundred mile an hour or something like that. We've got a. What you do is you rip it up and you put in a big tube, and you make it yeah. a modern prototype for an atmospheric railway. They should just. You know. except, you, except you get to the top and you hear a shunk and you just f free roll down. Yeet. Uh. But anyway, uh, free nonprofits, uh, conserving Carolina, <laughs> upstate forever, and pal, <laughs> play advocate. Yeah, well, okay. liberal. Yeah, they should do. <laughs> is, is this? Do we know no. if this is going to be like a paved path or just like a dirt path? Um. Right now, they have earmarked five million dollars for the project. The next stop, the next steps, and include continued fundraising and economic impact and feasibility study, along with the additional state and federal funding. Which five million sounds about right for thirty-one miles. So where are books on news? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's take the rail, give it to the WFNF. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, they need it. Yeah. Fundraising would likely take two years, and the creation of the trail is still three to five years away. I'll be in our but it, But it's still a really good middle ground for keeping the grade in, in place. Yeah, at least uh, it'll still be there for people to see yeah. and be like, wow, look at this ridiculousness that people used and to you crash can, their trains on. And you can yeet yourself off the one-way web <laughs> going downhill. <laughs> we need to. What, what did we say? Uh, Iron Horseman downhill jam. Get on bicycles yeah. and try this. Uh, yeah, I'd be down. Soapbox derby. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Well, I was thinking yeah. at least you know just once, just once before they pull up all the track, get a caboose at the top of the hill, do some train bowling, IRL. Yeah. So, <laughs> do some of the caboose Olympics. And we're going to paint it in the ESCMD paint scheme. Yeah, exactly. Is it even like that? Operable? That will be the crossover episode that we ever hide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We brought a, we brought Heist and Mr. Beast on to, to yeah, <laughs> to crash this caboose. <laughs> anyway, but you know what Oops. else is happening to a very famous mountain pass allegedly in the country? Or actually, a uh, tendency pass. It's turned the wheel open. I'll be able no, when I see yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's not. I don't. No, it it may wheel open to my speeder before it reopens to an actual train. Um, at this point. <laughs> and it's not going anywhere, I don't think, because they. It's not going the government anywhere. Won't let them abandon it, but they, like, nothing's gonna happen to it. There's no way. Uh, they even keep, though keep, there keep, is keep... a. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> even though there is a use agreement in place now for. I can I can oh, yeah. single handedly debunk this tum this deviant art post. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the replies, this person says that. Oh, hold on, I am listening to a video of a locomotive with a bad turbocharger. Give me a sec. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Union Pacific apparently had no interest in operate in in early 2020. It was a disclosed that UP had been in discussion with Rio Grande Pacific to with the intent of hauling 40 that 400,000 barrels of oil per day. From the UNA Basin via the UNA Basin Railway, which isn't true. Like that line, never ever, when they were talking about that, was never ever ever going to be for hauling the oil. Yeah, no, no this is, it's it's something I that got, like explicitly said you were not going to be able to do that. Yeah, well, they even, I think what they did is they went to Congress or whatever when they were trying to buy the line, when Rio Grande Pacific was trying to buy the line, and like, ask them to have it written out that they could not haul oil over this because that's not what they wanted to do and they didn't want people to keep leveraging that idea against them um because they it was, did anyway. it was making them look anyway. bad and yeah no i mean the rumor just keeps going around and around and around you know i mean i can't say for certain that this isn't going to happen but it's probably not going to happen so it won't it's not going to yeah no. uh you know i I, you know what, I'll just, yeah, it, it's not going to happen. If something proves me wrong, then someone can clip this and, and tell me how wrong I was. But I, I it's it's just a rumor mill. It's just rumor mill on rumor mill. There's a reason that these, yeah. you know, the what we have on it just isn't very, what's the word? Yeah, it, 
It, it reminds me of something closer to home. <laughs> That's mm. also just a consistent rumor mill of what's going on. But, you know, it's just... I would love to see something happen to Tennessee Pass, but with everything yeah, that we've heard from... Will never run again. With like, everything just... that we've heard from the people on the inside of the industry, it's not... Like, there's, there's no plans that are going anywhere. Union Pacific does not want to sell. They don't want to lease. They don't want to play ball. And yeah. you piece you know, a, a hard ball to play with. And yeah, yeah, and they don't want to do anything with it themselves. They, they, I'm sure they would love yeah. to get rid of it just like Saluda. Yeah, or um, the Ram Valley Railway south of Silverton, Oregon. But, yeah. Rip, yeah. rip the other Silverton <laughs> train. Yeah. Well, we talked about NS. Uh, I need to talk about NS again because this is. You know, the continuing saga. Not exactly the continuing saga of the Class 1 meltdown, but we do have some things about the unions and sick time and etc. Uh, NS has reached an agreement with two more unions about sick time. Um, yeah, for paid sick time. This is with the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers and the Brotherhood of Railway Carmen. Uh, that's eight the uh, uh, eight unit unions that have been sort of smoothed over, but that means four that have not been, and I think those four are uh, some big ones. I thought they were the bigger ones, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but some sick time, like the the railroads going and like doing this and pursuing sick time agreements, is a step in the right direction. Like I can't be mad about it. Um, of course it's come to catastrophe and disaster and like the entire railroading industry being on the brink of collapse, but at least they're doing something about it. Um, meanwhile, NS is getting lambasted by like all of the major governing bodies, uh, the FRA, the NTSB, the AAR, um, because they have major maintenance issues including defective and loose wheels um and just like systemic systemic issues uh with regard to how they do their maintenance uh ns is or it would it would help if they didn't fire all their maintenance people yeah well yeah that that's a, a good place to start um yeah and the the rest of them don't want to, st you know, the ones that weren't fired don't want to stick around because of, you know, the sick time and the, the this and then that and, you know, it's not a good place to work and make a living anymore. They don't want to work there anymore. And the no few one wants to work anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the few people that are left are just uh, overburdened. They got to cut corners. They're being told to cut corners. NS is trying to make adjustments that will change the. Uh, change the way things are operating. We will see exactly what those adjustments are. Uh, one of them is apparently no trains longer than 10,000 feet regardless of distributed power. But if you're going to have shorter trains, that means you need to have more trains, which means you need to have crews for those trains. Which means, oh my god, it's not PSR anymore, but also... Now you need to figure out how to bring in people to the industry and re and retain people in the industry. Uh, people talk about like yeah. Amazon running out of workers because their insane turnover means yeah. that they just burn through entire communities and that's it. Uh, and the railroads, I feel like, have an even smaller pool of people to pick from. Maybe not that much smaller, oh, yeah. but reasonably smaller. Um, especially when it comes to the really you know, high skill positions in, in shops and things like that. But, you know, once you lose the goodwill of your workers, it is not an easy thing to get back. Um, and Ohio's levying lawsuits and the stockholders are levying lawsuits. Um, class action yeah. blames persistent schedule rarity for declining stock value. Who would have thought? Uh, who first of wow. all? Oh my God! Who could have seen this coming from one side? But on the other side, the thing that was explicitly to like 
boost the stock value and make the stockholders happy is they, now they coming back to bite them down. and it's now coming full circle and the stockholders are unhappy. Weird. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. According to a press release, the suit alleges that the railroad, quote, made false and or misleading statements and or failed to disclose that PSR, quote, led to and materially increased risk of future derailments. Uh, and was part <laughs> the of a shareholders culture... are like, we got to save face, guys. <laughs> it was part of a yeah. culture of increased risk taking at the expense of reasonable safety precautions due to Norfolk Southern's yeah. near term focus solely on profits, which is like the thing that everyone's been saying about PSR for the last five years how long is well, it when did what when i want to know is ask the same people that are saying that ask them uh if they want to ban stock buybacks <laughs> well <laughs> see they don't obviously yeah <laughs> i i know that you're a you're asking the question that already has the obvious answer but just to make it clear this is the final domino in a in a way for this is it coming full circle, the thing that was supposed to make these people happy is now making them unhappy. Uh, and the stockholders are, you know, a, an amorphous and wide group of people that are single-minded in that, you know, they're not railroaders. They are stockholders. What they care about is line go up. Um, yeah. And unlike the people in charge of the railroad, it's tough to blame these folks because these are people that bought in not because it was a railroad, not because it moved goods. They bought in because it was an investment. Um, and now that that investment... I don't feel bad for them. I, I mean, I don't feel bad for them, but it just... Their priorities make sense based on what they're here for, is I guess all Oh, yeah, they saw, they saw this industry is going to boom. Yeah. And so they bought, and then it's not booming. And so yeah. they sell, and so they sue, and, you know, whatever. I really, my only thing is, if we describe this as a failing of PSR, then you could just say, oh, we're not doing PSR anymore, with no material changes. You know, you could just use the word as the scapegoat, which I'm yep. afraid will happen. I mean, we've sort of seen it happen with every major class one saying, oh, we're doing PSR, except for BNSF. Who was still doing PSR, but just not calling it that. Absolutely doing uh, PSR. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just like, oh, look, BNSF's not doing PSR. First of all, BNSF very shortly thereafter turned out to beat the bad guy. But uh, it wasn't this immediate knee-jerk thing because they didn't call it PSR. Uh, but now the railroads that did it, particularly NS, and that brought it out as this, this is our winning formula... It's precision scheduled railroading. We're going to make railroading, you know, uh, super profitable and whatever. Yeah, sure. Great again. Um, yeah. Are Tomorrow. now able to hide behind that, like, oh, oh, that wasn't a good strategy. Let's just shuffle that away, but without necessarily materially changing their practices. I hope that doesn't happen, but it's, you know, it just feels like the next logical step. Uh, there are also a couple of states that are considering legislation on limiting train length. Um if the railroads will be uh, forced to follow that is sort of a question, because I remember talking with a, somebody who worked on various railroads, including the Housatonic, actually, and is a member of the PN, and I sort of brought that up, and he just scoffed at it, because apparently there's some, like, one of these ancient railroad laws on the books that, you know, this country grew up around railroads, and they have such incredible power... Uh, because of that, it's it's just, you know, I assume it's just a law that says the railroad can do whatever it wants. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we'll see if any of these uh, attempted restrictions that sort of, like, torpedo the basis of PSR actually can happen or work if they do happen. But, uh, yeah, so there's your update on the continuing saga of... Um, of uh, NS and it's doing the canary in the coal mine for the entire railroading industry. <laughs> anyway. They need to send their people back to choo-choo you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Does anyone have any... Uh, uh, let's, let's do, like, maintenance away stuff. Does anyone have any things they want to cover? Blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, no, I, really. I'll do the M tracker because I accidentally looked earlier. Oh god damn it! So I've already been on it, but I, I I'll forget which one it was. Um, <laughs> I'll forget. I accidentally looked. Honestly, I, I don't remember which one it was. I know it was I one of the. You. I, I can remember there were like five or six trains in the black. Don't remember which one is the worst one. Um, Sorry, I just looked by accident. Your so I figure I'll, I'll uh, But I am going to put like uh, royales and stuff on hold for a little while. I'm not mentally capable of doing them. Uh, so that's that's my only announcement. Latest train on Amtrak. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with like a. I, I'm gonna assume it's like the Eastbound Zephyr or something, because it always is. I'm gonna it's say it. Oh, Kaiser. I'm gonna say it's the uh, northbound Crescent. Hmm. How do you spell Crescent? Seriously? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I got it. Milky. He wasn't kidding. Uh. <laughs> C-R-E-S, Cress, and then Scent, but like a chain. Westbound Builder. W-B Builder. And uh, TJ? I'm going to say the Northbound Vermonter. That's a way to one, and I can tell you what isn't that one. <laughs> no, I it, know it's what is that one? one? Is it on time? Yeah, it's on time. It's actually, oh, it's 18 minutes late. That's White oh, River no. Junction. Uh, and then second off, you said Westbound Builder? So that's number seven. Um, there's a westbound builder at Harv Mont Haver, Montana. That's 35 minutes late. And a uh, westbound builder with a service disruption. So it will probably get more late. Um, but as of right now, it is eight minutes late at Milwaukee. So it's not that one. Milwaukee. Um, there's a northbound crescent that is... Um, one hour and 12 minutes late uh, at Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, and let me make sure that this isn't the latest. Uh, and it is. And Ellis got the latest train on Amtrak right. Okay. Uh, oh, he didn't forget. Eastbound, it is the Eastbound Zephyr, eight hours late at Ottumwa, Iowa. Oh, it's eight hours late? Oh, my God. I oh. thought it was like seven and, and change. What are the two Florida trains? Did you say those already? Uh, Florida, no, the, but they are both late. There's the Silver Star to Miami at 7 hours and 14 late at Kissimmee, Florida, and the Silver Meteor also to Miami at 4 hours 18 minutes late, also okay. at Kissimmee, Florida. That, uh, Kissimmee. that Silver Star is giving the Zephyr a run for its money. That's why I wasn't sure which, which one one's was. the one that doesn't stop, that doesn't go to Tampa. The, the Silver Meteor doesn't go to Tampa. The Silver Star goes to Tampa. Yeah, Silver Star goes to Tampa. And stops at Lakeland twice. Okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. So that's All right, time to terminate, because i got to run. Uh, my uh, last bit is that Trainsmack did an article on Heist, which is so cool. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this is incredible. Like, every, every once in a while, I'll mention him to, you know, guys at the Model Rare Club, whatever. And... Half the time, or, you know, most of the time, I don't get like a an acknowledge, like you know, they don't know who he is. But that, I feel like that is going to become less and less likely. He is a juggernaut in the industry, and that it's fantastic. Yeah. I wish him the Finally best of luck. Finally, tube. Yeah, I hope him and Layton and Weibel get to be the the uh, top gear of of steam locomotives. I hope you know what I just hope that they bring you up along with them in their coattails. Yeah. Because I mean, if they're if if Train YouTube gets popular through them, yeah, you could call I, that Train I, YouTube. I have got to Train YouTube. That's know, what I just said. Every time I do a video with Heist or whatever, my subscriber count does jump. It's a. Uh, it was interesting. You know, it's like holy crap, this actually works. Like the follow through, holy which crap, is why I'd like to do. I, I still want to do a celebrity royale with him and you know and the guys, um, and the boys. Yeah, you know that's and and other things for the future regarding trading cards and three foot and you know whatever. Uh, anyway, Milky. Okay, my termination uh, is this wonderful Bachrain compound engine that I found before the podcast. 
Edward T. <laughs> Johnson. Yes. Does this have a stat um, page? It does. That's oh, no. I found, it. <laughs> I, I, I found it while I was reading through your Valley Railroad thing. Oh, no. Because there was mentioned in there, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> God, now um, we need to find it, something uh, to pair it with. Is uh, rest in peace to the SP Phoenix line. Um, I saw it used to branch off at Welton, Arizona. The line coming in from the west branched off at Welton, Arizona. And uh, I saw, I drove by Welton and saw the branch where it used to go off. And I was like, sad. Is RIP the Phoenix, the old Phoenix sub. Oh, is that the one that used to be, like, useful? Yeah, yeah the that's the used to take and then died. In yeah, that's, they need to like not break. That. Yeah, I don't they know need why to unbreak it. Like, I don't know why it's not like not around because currently trains have to go all the way to Picacho, which is like another hundred and fifty miles, two hundred miles, hundred and fifty miles, and then take the take the fifteen mile an hour end of the Y and then backtrack fifty miles to Phoenix, <laughs> like a hundred miles to Phoenix. Sorry. So, I don't understand quite why they don't use it, given there's quite a bit of traffic that goes into Phoenix uh, from the west. Well, but hmm. one of the reasons is if you're going north, there is no leg of the Y on that side. So, you have to come in from the, uh, you have to come in from the east. Well, there, uh, if you're coming in from, yeah, you have to come in from the east. So, if you're going, like, if you're coming in. But if you're going to the yard in Phoenix, it doesn't matter. I'm just, if, if you're going if you're from going the yard in Phoenix, but if you're going north, you you there used to be a part of the Y, but no traffic goes north. That's BNSF. Well, when you go point north. is they need to reopen it so that the Sunset Limited doesn't suck. It's all still there. The whole right of way is still there, and UP uses it up to a certain point. It's just car storage. Right so like, go yell at them. Make them. Yeah, I will again. personally. All right, yeah, they, they, use it out to, uh, they use it as far as like just past Buckeye, because I went over it today, and there's cars way out there. <laughs> Again, it's, you know, car storage. No, it was like, there's industry out there that yeah. far. Yeah, I don't think there's anything out there. Maybe aliens. Uh, TJ? Mm -hmm. Do you have a... Uh, I got nothing. I realized my mic was uh, muted for a little while. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Uh, nothing. Love you, bud. Uh, Kaiserin? Uh, here we go for one of them, uh, death battle things. Death battle. Alex Carnes versus Heist. <laughs> not, you, none of you, I don't think, know who Alex Carnes is. I also but know who Carnes is. That, that would be a fight for the ages right there. Okay. Alex Carnes versus Heist. But locomotive versus. But locomotive yeah. versus. <laughs> Oh. And in Minecraft. <laughs> in Minecraft. <laughs> in Open TTD. Okay. Uh, well, thank you guys for uh, coming along and tuning in, etc., etc. I have to drive very quickly to Pawtucket, and I will see you next episode. Have fun in the bucket. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.